Hey guys, welcome back to Stacey Goes Outside. It is the last week of February here in California. It's starting to heat up a little bit. The days are getting longer. No better way to cap off the month than to be out with Captain Rob Reimers again, Rustic Rob. If he looks familiar, it's probably because you watched our videos for Landlocked Salmon and Kokanee. But we're doing something completely different tonight. What are we looking for tonight? Oh, well, we're looking for the biggest fish you'll catch. We caught the smallest one before, and now we're going for the biggest one, a sturgeon. Yay! So it's sturgeon <laughs> season. I might be a little bit late on the start of sturgeon season because you started doing that. A couple weeks ago. So this evening, we are on the Sacramento River. We launched from Calusa State Park. I've only seen like one other boat. So hopefully we can run into some sturgeon. And remind me again what the legal keeper size is. 40 to 60 inches from the nose to the fork of the tail. Okay, so 40 to 60, and then what's the limit per angler? Uh, you can only keep one per day. Once you keep one, you have to stop fishing, but you can catch and release all you want. You know, like all of our other videos, we're gonna show you what we're using. So let's get to it. So I have only been sturgeon fishing one time before this, and that was out in the California Delta. And of course, I will put the link up here. We use some sort of secret concoction that the captain would not reveal, but what are you using today? I'm gonna use a little bit of eel, and I like eel because when the bait stealers, we have a lot of problems with bait stealers up here. Strip the other rods, the eel will be there because it's the toughest thing there is. In fact, they don't even mess with it because they can't get it off. So we're gonna use a little eel. We're gonna use ghost shrimp and night crawlers, which is my favorite. And we've got a little squid, a little sardines. We've got a little bit of everything. So for the most part, like you can just go to most any larger bait shop and find these items. Last few years, we've been having a lot of trouble. From oh, week okay. to week, I don't know if I'm gonna get ghost shrimp or not. We were lucky today, they had fresh batch in. So I, I run over there and got them. So you just opened up a package of a lamprey eel. eel. I like to, I do it a little differently than most people do, but I like to split it. Put it up like this. And what I do is I split it and I turn it inside out. So is that eel frozen when you purchased it? Yeah, it's frozen. Okay. It's still just a little bit frozen. It's hard to work with. A little thaw out pretty quick. I just run thread down it like this. Again. And then I take another piece and I'll split this one completely in half. And I like to hang them on there just for a little tidbit for them to sneak up from behind and get. One of our handy dandy bait buttons. This is the larger size, and I'll put it right on here like this because the bait sealers are tug on it, and that way they can't get it off of there. Oh, okay. I actually um, saw that bait button demo at the last ISE show, so those just paid that bait on that hook so it uh -huh. doesn't fall off. All right. Yep. All right, so this is going to be the first rig. It's going to be the one I run in the center. Okay. How many rods are we going to run? Three. I like to run three, unlike the Delta. Well, you got such a vast area and you're trying to attract fish in. Our area is a lot smaller here. Mm -hmm. I just like to run a, just three rods because here, when you get a fish on, you got to get the other rods in as fast as possible. I've had four and I've had trouble before with, you know, with two people and you, by the time you get the third one in, the fish will run out and I'll turn around and run right back at you and they'll get around <laughs> the rod. Uh, and then okay. we lose them. So okay. I'd rather just fish with three. And then how deep are we right now? Right now say? we're nine feet. You know, unlike the Delta where it's, you know, it's a lot deeper, here they do all the running sideways. So that's why you gotta oh. get the rods in so fast. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be setup number two. I like to put on two or three ghost shrimp on here. These three if they're small ones. And then I tie them on. So again, you're not like piercing them. You're just using them. No. Straight. I want them to stay alive for as long as I can. Okay. These are saltwater creatures, so eventually they'll die. And then we take a couple night crawlers. And I know we used to always use pile worms, and so did I, but I kind of got tired of the pile worms because they cost so much money. When you put them out there because they're a saltwater creature, it doesn't take very long and they die. Or if I put these night crawlers on here, you can come pull it in two or three hours later and the, they'll still be moving around like this. And a sturgeon comes along and he feels that movement, he'll just latch right onto it. When I first started, all we used was uh, the ghost shrimp, and then we started you know, putting the pile worms on. And I went to these night crawlers a few years ago. Okay. And they work pretty well. You're not having to use any um, scents or anything like that? No, I don't use the scent straight. the first time it goes out. If I bring it back in, the bait still looks good. I'll put some scent on it and okay. throw it back out. So we're gonna put that one on one of the side rods. Mm -hmm. 
So we're in less than 10 feet of water. About the weights that you're using. I mean, they're not, they don't have to be that heavy. No, we haven't. Um, I use five ounces is enough. I try to use as much as necessary, but as little as possible. If you're gonna spend the night, you wanna go to bed, you wanna add a couple extra ounces to it. I remember when I first started sturgeon fishing, I was throwing it out with enough weight, you know? So I went to bed and I woke up the next morning and it was floating on the surface from all the weeds it got on. You wanna add a little weight when you go to bed, make sure you keep, keep it on the bottom. Do a lot of boats spend the night out here? Most boats really? do. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, quick tip guys. If you are as allergic to critters like mosquitoes and gnats and stuff like I am, make sure that you cover up. It's right before five o'clock and there are swarms of them out here. So consider yourself warned. All right, setup number three. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be a sardine. I think sardines and anchovies are actually a really underrated bait. Split it open again, pull the bones out, and wrap it around kind of like we did the eel. And that in itself will catch sturgeon. We've got the three rods in the water. What are we looking for? We're gonna watch these rods and what kind of action are we looking for on the you're, rods? You're gonna see bait dealer pipes that are just gonna be going like this, you know? Okay. You're looking for one where it just goes like this. Or if you're really lucky and it hangs itself, it'll just go down like that. That's what we're looking uh -huh. for. <laughs> Different. I like these rod holders because I had trouble before where trying to get out of the rod holders, the sturgeon would feel it and they would drop the bait and go. Oh. They've got a special way to do it. You don't want to pull up for the back because it won't release. You want to pull from the front. And it's best just to only grab the front because if you pull from both, you might accidentally lead with the back and it won't come out. And then when you pull it out and you go to set the hook, set the hook like you're trying to break that rod in half. Okay. Yep. And then set the hook. Yep. Set the hook like you want to break that rod in half. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, so while we're waiting for the sturgeon to bite, you are gonna show us how you tie up your leaders, right? Y yes. Okay. Um, I use a, this is 40 pound steel leader. It's got plastic coating on it. And you use one of these sleeves on here. And then I use an dot octopus hook. Over the years, I've come up with this where it's almost like a double loop clinch knot but I go through it twice, and then I'll go through the sleeve a second time. And then once I do that, this is the thing that I really like to do is I put a little overhand knot in it like this. And then I go back through it one more time, pull that down tight. And that is so strong like that, you can almost just fish it without even crimping it. Pull that up tight, and that's all in there. Nice and neat, and it will not come out. And then you crimp it just to make for sure, for sure. Take a little bit of this heat shrink. I like to put that over the sleeve and the knot and everything. So when I shrink that on there, it makes it rigid. Then on the other end, I'll get a, you wanna get a good swivel, put another sleeve on. And I use these McMahon swivels. Do the same thing you did up above. Cut off your little tag. Is that a good crimping? And that'll never come out. You promise? I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and what I like to do too, when I'm heat shrinking this, uh, electrical heat shrink for when you're doing wires and stuff to waterproof them. And then I, what I usually do is I hold it straight like this to run it underneath the faucet, but now we'll have to just stick it on the river for a second. Yeah, and it's nice and still. Oh, okay. That's yeah. it. All right. All right, so it's right about six o'clock, dinner time. You know me, I've got to eat every two hours. So Rob's actually grilling up some stuff. What do you got here? We got some salmon and some sturgeon. Oh my gosh, I've never had sturgeon before. What is it marinated in? It's marinating a little bit of soy sauce. Okay. And then I use a, a spice that's called roasted herb and gar uh, roasted garlic and herb. God, it smells amazing. And then you just pulled these mystery foil packets off the grill. What the heck's in here? We got fries. Oh my gosh. Arby's what kind of fries are fries? <laughs> Arby's fries. Arby's fries. Arby's fries. Arby's fries. This is some gourmet stuff here, Rob. And we got Brussels sprouts. Oh, awesome. Chaos is going to ensue if we get a bite here while you're unloading all this yeah. dinner. So we'll, we'll see how this plays out. I noticed the sun is just starting to set. So are we kind of in the key time? We're in the real sweet spot. All right. So we may have a lot of action here. We may be eating with one hand and reeling sturgeon in with the other. Okay, first time having sturgeon. Mmm. It's firm, but it's not like dry. 
Mm. Very good. You want to try the salmon? Okay. Mm. Very good. Okay. Normally I do Subway when I'm out here. This Subway? Is a, this is a special treat. <laughs> Plus we got Girl Scout cookies for dessert too. Get some of those out there on your plate and then I'll get some over here. Those are grilled in a pan. Pretty gourmet stuff here, Rob. Oh, you don't need to film me eating anymore. <laughs> Well guys, we ran into some bait stealers, so we gotta retie on some new stuff. You know, even if you're watching the rods and you don't think that anything's hitting them, how often should you reel up and check your bait? Well, if, if there's nothing hitting them, then you know you don't have to pick it up very often, maybe 20 minutes or so. Nope. No? Yep, he's on there. Oh. We have light. Oh, God, oh! Oh! Keep going. Oh. I, I can't even like get yeah, thank you. Like, do you want me to re reel while he's doing that or just let him run? Oh god. He went the wrong way. He went the wrong way. You're gonna have to kill that ankle. Oh <laughs> he just fooling me. Alright guys, I got a fish on. We're gonna try to get some light. It totally ran to the front of the boat, so. Don't point your rod at him, keep it up a little bit. Oh my god. You went the wrong way. <laughs> okay. okay guys, this fish is all over the place, so I'm not sure how great <laughs> this footage is gonna be because I cannot take my hands off this reel. I'm trying to figure out where he is. Okay, what I need you to do, here, you go to the other side. Other side of the here? Yeah. You gotta get him before he gets around a snag. Okay, you're gonna have to move like, real, 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 real. Real fast, yeah. I'm gonna get up ahead of him. Real, 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 real. Surgeon fishing on the second. I don't know. Like I don't feel. So this is a high snag area. What what's here well, that we could have lost it? Right above where we were fishing, it is, and that one did an unusual thing and immediately went up river. Doesn't feel like it. I don't feel it. What did I do wrong, Rob? You didn't do anything wrong. It was a fish. <laughs> he was just smarter than we were. He immediately went up river. Went underneath the boat, went up river, and went right for that snag. What I usually say when they go for a snag like that, that's where they came from before we hooked them. So he's just running home to mama to whine about a hook in his mouth. When you hooked it, it immediately just went right past yeah, the boat and was, was gone. Afraid, I was afraid the boat was going to like cut off the line or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so there wasn't nothing we could do. It was just... All right. We just well, guys, we lost that one, so we're rigging up again. That one took the eel, right? Took the eel, It yep. took the whole thing with it. So that happened so quickly. I don't even know if I had enough lighting to show you guys my GoPro footage. We'll we'll see, but I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. That thing ran under the boat. Once yeah, that thing is off. Ugh. You did a great job of laying on the side <laughs> of the boat and keeping the line off the boat. It hey, was, I didn't fall in, so every, you know everything was right. You small victories. Better than we were this time. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. We are within the three-hour mark, so. Let's see if we can get a couple more bites here before we have to end our night. Oh. <laughs> you got a fish on here, huh? <laughs> a little one. Yeah, it's our second one of the night. She was having a little problem with her GoPro, so we don't know if that was working or not. Oh and this guy is just running all over. Oh my God, it's not even letting me turn the reel. See, I tighten that drag up quite a bit. <laughs> is it too much for you when you loosen it? Or? No, I just need it. I hope we didn't snag that one because it was kind of late on getting, uh, getting everything going. He took it down a couple times. Oh, it's like under. Yep, he's playing round and round. Oh, 
pick this motor up. Oh. <laughs> I gotta get back and get you. Put your legs swinging out there. <laughs> Keep going just like you are. Don't, don't let that rod point to him too much. Oh, you got it? You just place the rod butt right. Oh, okay. Jacket. Okay. Jacket. Or just it's kind of my. Right there? Yeah. Okay. I got a little rubber thing we can stick on there too if you need it. Even those belt things that you wear. Well, I got one of those. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't tell people how much you weigh. What was that? 124 pounds? <laughs> well, maybe a little you know, bit more. You don't look like you could weigh more than 100 maybe pounds. Maybe after Something I ate wet. all that sturgeon and salmon. Oh. There we go. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Not blowing bubbles yet, but he looks like he's getting close. Yeah. Okay, walking around the outside. Oh, shit! <laughs> we gotta get around it. Oh, my God. Okay, oh. we've been back and forth two or three times here. Oh, there it is, there, there it is. is. Oh, he's just a little guy. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's good, we got him in now. I was afraid we may have snagged him. Wait, his head down, but yet. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. <sighs> there he is, right there. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> I am like not, I am, I, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm not like faking this breathing for the camera, but I mean, I'm freaking exhausted. Well, oh he was god. a toughie boy. He just kept trying to get around the, Around the engine, just going back and forth and back and forth. Can you bring them on? Or? Yep. All right, guys, we did it. We're gonna show you right now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm like still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get a good look at this guy. Hey, nice fight, kiddo. Look at this, so beautiful. So you're estimating this is how big? Well, we'll get, we can measure it. Um, okay. I was guessing 55. All right, well, let's see how good you are. Okay, hold this where his nose is. Okay, well, now we're gonna measure him. Well, I was off it. <laughs> no, I'm right on, 55. 55? Yeah. Yeah, right here. Good job. Right there. Unbelievable. When we got the last time we were out was or a time before last with 59 and three quarters. <laughs> we made it by a quarter of an inch. Cool. We're gonna put this guy back in the water so someone else can catch him. Ugh. You wanna release him? No, you can do it. You're fine. <laughs> Let's just get him back. Here we go. Right. <laughs> See you, buddy. There he goes. Oh my gosh. All right, high five. We did it. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's 10 p.m. We're gonna call it a day. I'll be back for sure. Lost one, landed one, completely, completely satisfied with that fish. It was, what, 55 inches? 55 inches 55 to inches. Four. And it gave a one hell of a fight, so I'm very, very satisfied with this trip. What's next for us, Rob? Where are we going next? I'm just gonna be tagging along like all year with him, as long as he doesn't <laughs> kick me off his boat. Well, we're either going to um, Collins Lake, Okay. For some trout, okay. or uh, maybe back here. 
All right. All right, guys, so that concludes another awesome trip with Rustic Raw Rhymers. So this was my first night fishing trip. My advice, if you're going night fishing for the first time, make sure that you go with someone experienced. Obviously, if it's at nighttime, there's not gonna be a lot of light. So you kind of want to go with someone who knows the lay of the land or lay of the water or whatever, because you don't want to come out here and start running into trees and get yourself in big trouble. Also, you want to make sure that you dress for weather that's colder than you expect. You know, we launched around four o'clock or so. It was really warm in Sacramento today. You saw me at the beginning of the video. I was in a tank top and capri pants. Very quickly, I had all my layers on that I brought. So just make sure that you bundle up. And then also, if you're not a big fan of bugs, if you're allergic, make sure that you wear insect repellent, make sure you've got long sleeves, make sure you wear something to protect your face because they're out here. They're out here probably from a couple hours before sunset to an hour or so afterwards. So they will kind of be in your face. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you hit the thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my adventures. And who knows, maybe if you're out here at Calusa State Park going after some sturgeon, I'll see you outside.